Hey guys, I got my uh, crazy little man here and we're gonna show you guys some details on my CJ and the buggy so you guys can see it close up. I'll take you through it. I got the hood up on the CJ and you can see it's got a uh, an LS3 in there. It's been in there for over 10 years, I guess now. You can also see I've got uh, Fox 2.5 bypasses and then uh, a very strange setup. I got some air shocks in here on leaf springs and everyone's like, what? But it's perfect because it gives me a little bit of ride height on the trail, um, a little bit more control like you get from a, a regular shock and then the bypass comes in um, when you're hitting stuff a little bit faster. So I was getting that trail control. It's kind of like pre-DSC <laughs> playing with stuff before Fox had the DSC valves. I put, I made a complete master assembly from old Willwood race car parts, um, built the pedal box and uh, all that kind of stuff. I'll show you that when we go to the inside. But you know, this cage kind of work is interesting because it it ties through you know goes down to the frame it's actually all bolted together so you can unbolt it um and it goes back up here to the firewall and then i'll show you on the inside where we've tied the firewall pieces back in so that it, it all connects um it's an old radiator out of my 2009 race car with a couple of fans on it i think it's got one of the bomber fab alternator kits it's pretty simple i got my worn winch box up underneath the hood um, I cut that out of there just so that it has a real low profile coming in here and then something kind of neat This is the original kind of design for my actual rage forth bumpers. It's just kind of a real simple hoop um, You can see we play with our buddies and stuff on the trail and smash into them a little bit With the kickers that came back and I incorporated that same look. It's actually kind of in my race car You know the normal loop a few more dents and dings on this one and then the tubes that come back for the support so kind of a standard setup but it's easy. Uh, I've got poison spider fenders on this thing. Back in the day, Larry sent me these just to make it kind of clean. It's nice to have all steel. And then I built these Rageforth rocker panels uh, with Schaefer, Mike Schaefer, back like over 10 years ago. Um, angle iron, tubes, some dimple dye stuff. Um, a lot of the same theory that's in the rockers from today. Um, one of the cool things about this Jeep, it's flat underneath. So this skid plate bolts in from the side that holds you know, that covers everything, but there's nothing hanging down underneath it until you get to the rear links. So it's completely flat, um, heading all the way out to the back and the back's got a high pinion nine, so you don't hit anything on it. Front's got a low pinion and it looks like it would hit everything except that the leaf springs are there to kind of protect it. And uh, as long as you kind of drive around that pumpkin, you can pretty much party on whatever you want. Uh, shackles are hung way up above the frame. They're super long gives you a lot of clearance. So let me show you what I was talking about underneath. Hopefully the camera can uh, pick this up, but I got a pedal box up here that we built, figured out the swing ratios and everything. Shannon Campbell showed me how to do that years ago on a car. And then, uh, you know, we kind of incorporated the same thing. Nice long pedal so you can get in there. If you look up inside here, you can see the cage work that I was talking about that ties in all the cages back up underneath the chassis. So there's actually tube work going underneath the chassis, through the firewall, and then down all the way to the floorboard. And then that floorboard piece kicks back in, goes up to the seat mounts. Seat mounts come back up into the cage and tie it all through. Um, the top upper, you know, the, the main chassis one, that ties back into the, the dashboard here, and that's the one that's connected up underneath. So there's a tube here, running to the firewall this way, the down tube this way, Maybe you can see it a little better from the other side. JL audio amp up in here, uh, so it stays a little bit dry. Kind of the problem with uh, you know the Jeep stuff as far as uh, going through river crossings is if you don't tuck it up in there, you're kind of screwed. It's all going to get wet. So if you want to play your speakers, we put the wet speakers. These I think are Rockford Fosgates uh, down in here. They're like boat speakers. Sounds pretty good, it makes it rock. Uh, actually, it's kind of got neat acoustics the way it plays through there. Um, the rear the rear is pretty badass, so let me show you the rear. It's got a, uh, oh, hold on, quick stop. You gotta see this camping stove. So, this Coleman camping stove I got when I was like 15 years old uh, to go camping. That is the most disgusting yet cool looking thing ever because this stove has been working for it still works. It still works. I still cook on it. It's had so many meals cooked on it. It's got these cool wind wings pop out and slide in there. They're almost too gross to want to touch, but um, things badass. So the tailgate folds up. I keep all my tools in here. My jump starter, 
um, my boxo uh, wrap from the hammers this year and uh, all my hand tools are in two different bags so that I can piece together or cobble together whatever I need. There's a set of jumper cables in one of these bags too because I keep uh, like welding rod some 6061 inside a little box just so in case you ever got to weld anything up. Yeah, so Genrite fuel tank out of a TJ. I even think uh, Schaefer and I junkyarded. One of us found the, the deal for a filler. Um, these little pieces I made years ago, they're wraps. I just took a flat piece of steel on the top and I wrapped it around a uh, propane bottle or a uh, like a nitrogen bottle and then got the radius I wanted and then I capped the bottom of it with a piece and what this did is when you come off of a rock and hit it slides it doesn't peel the body back out and so I'm showing you this stuff because this is the kind of thing I tried to do when I built the Rage Forth bumpers um, is I tied all this stuff in so you couldn't you wouldn't just smash the body up because that's always been a problem. I mean, all the way since when I built this. So Curry F9 rear housing, Willwood. I think those are four piston Willwoods in the back here. It's got six pistons in the front uh, with Spider Tracks cups and uh, Spider Tracks 14 inch rotors and all their brake mounts. Um, you can see some clearance like issues we had with bumps. So I added little aluminum spacers to uh, the shocks to make them bump at just the right time. It's got some limit straps, poly limit straps in here. Um, I don't know, it's pretty pretty clean. Now the suspension setup, it's got nice, really long links. The exhaust is atrocious. Don't comment on the exhaust, please. But um, it's got a wishbone. So this, this wishbone setup is, uh, is going up to the front there. It's just one single tie-in point. And the reason that that's cool is because the rear end doesn't shift side to side in the rocks. That's a great viewpoint where you can see how flat the skid plate is and how little the skid plate actually hits the ground because it's really small. Um, you can see how far out the rockers are and that they rub on a lot of stuff. I mean, the rockers on this thing, they rub on a lot. Like, you look down in here and you can see how they just kind of smear rocks everywhere, but that's what they're good for. They push you off the body and uh, these rockers, we're actually integrated. I know it sounds funny to keep showing all this stuff, but the rockers are integrated into these bottom pieces. So the rockers are integrated into, integrated into the cage there. The cage is tied in in a couple of places, which means all of these are all tied in. So this thing's actually, it's pretty strong. Uh, the rear pieces for the rear corners are tied back into the frame here. There's other uprights for the shock mounts. So for a little CJ, this thing's Kind of cool, kind of a fun little toy, but it's got so many hours of labor into it, like ridiculous amount of labor, but it's a fun driving car. Works super good, 300 M axles all around. Vision wheels, spider tracks hubs. Um, you can tell it's got like <laughs> five eighths lugs on everything and it's kind of set up well. It's on BFG red labels. Uh, don't forget 150 bucks off on the set of these. Fox has got that 10% off deal, which is rad. ARB cooler. You guys can get a discount on those this weekend. And 40 Parts is paying all that shipping and sales tax. Let me show you a little detail on the buggy. Starting in the front, it's an IFS car. We designed it back in 2014 after we'd already built our first one. It's got the minimal amount of things. Like literally it's down to like one rigid single row light in the front because King of the Hammers is a day race, you know. Um, obviously I have a whole light setup we can put on this thing uh, with all our rigid stuff. Um, if we need to, don't forget ridges on sale, 10% off on this thing, but also it's got 30 series CVs. It's got Alpin brakes that are just massive. It's got a seven inch throw rack in it. These are some of the coolest things like this power steering cooler from CNR racing. It's so efficient. It doesn't need a, uh, it doesn't need a fan behind it. Just the transfer of airflow through that thing keeps our temps like you know, 210 degrees was the max this thing's ever hit, which on power steering fluid's fine, you know. Um, Fox three and a half inch bypasses with uh, two and a half inch coilovers, and the coilovers have the DSC valves. See, um, these DSC valves make all the difference in the world on the low speed stuff, so um, they're super badass. All FK Himes on everything. Um, the huge FK Uniballs, man, these things are just beasts. The, WSSX 24s. In here, ARB, 
and it's inside like a Gearworks diff that my friend Brian builds. And we put it all together to make sure, you know, basically everything's super dialed. It's got two Odyssey batteries up in here, the 925s. Um, you know, this thing's kind of like wherever there was room, we stuffed things. Here's a great view of these brakes from here. Like these things are just massive. Uh, six piston Alcons. Alcon makes badass stuff. You know, these brakes are like full motorsport quality for a little rock crawler. Um, moving inside it, it's kind of lack of creature comforts. It's badass looking, you know, but it's also like Spartan. So you got your master kill up there. You turn the ignition on. It's all programmed by James Lynn. Um, got our safety stuff in here from Safecraft for a fire extinguisher. You know, nice belts. All the electronics are back here. Cool stuff with like the Parker pumpers being programmed in now to my controls so I can control the speed of it, you know, whenever I want and stuff like that. There's no inside lights, there's nothing. It's uh, it's down to oh, yeah. being as small as you can. Um, back here, you can see we got this cool CNR pressurized cooling system on a giant CNR racing radiator. Um, all of the uh, exhaust work is all covered in Inconel and uh, that keeps the heat down under the hood. It's a dry sump with an ARE dry sump. So the motor, the motor is an LS7 and I've had so many people kind of call BS on me, but it is a stock crate motor. Um, we worked with Kevin Stearns at Tilden. He put a cam that he makes in it and a pack valve springs, a Trunnion upgrade kit, but like it has never had the heads off it. It is completely stock. It's a 505 horsepower motor from the factory and it's probably at like 550 or 550. 45 or something right now, but it's a good combo because it keeps everything alive um, We need more though. I'm just saying it right now. Can't keep up anymore with uh, with a crate motor um, I need I need 750 horsepower now because the guys have gotten so fast and uh, it's just not quite there, but It's kind of the easy solution. You know getting a motor that's bigger <laughs> Isn't really rocket science. It's just money. So Going back here, it's kind of a cool setup. I don't know if you guys know Weldon fuel pumps, but uh, Weldon's got these two drop-in fuel pumps that sit on these top plates. What's cool is you can just take them out by removing these top plates. So you just pull them up, disconnect the Holly fuel mat, and you can take them apart. But really, they're so reliable. Um, I haven't had to deal with that. You know, they're really a great part. Um, it's got two one-way flow valves so that you can, they're check valves basically. And then that goes back up to the regulator. It's got the dry brake system. The reason that we did all the dry brake and everything is it's not like we need those 20, 30 seconds at the hammers, but we found that it was safer, um, especially if you're gonna do jumping jacks on a tire. But no, for real, the dry brake, it dripped a lot less fuel for us than dump cans. And uh, you know, with the brakes here and back, like just a few years ago, we had the exhaust on the other side, or sorry, we had the fuel on the other side. And it would get so scorching hot that you know you're dry you're filling up stuff here and the exhausts here and it was bad yeah not a ton you can see back here it's got our uh, power steering solutions uh charlie makes the the best power steering stuff and he's got his uh, reservoir back there our race proven alternator the big huge fox three fives back here it's all cool stuff there's another cnr uh transmission cooler back here the, the radiator's got a built-in oil cooler and a built-in transmission cooler inside it. So it's running both of those. Um, on the safety side, I don't know if you can see that, that little head back there, but that's one of our, uh, our automatic systems for the Safecraft deal. And then there's another one right here that's a glass break. So the glass break one, if this thing catches on fire and the temperature here gets up to like two, I think this one's at 240 if I recall, something like that. This one will blow and then it'll put the fire out. Sometimes you put in the fire out before you even know it. Uh, this is my secret weapon. I wasn't gonna show anybody, but this little guy here is my backup camera. So the backup camera is actually on all the time, only comes off if we have like an issue and it needs to tell us on the screen that there's something else going on. Spider Tracks Pro Series housing, uh, three and a half inch. Alcon brakes back here as well. God, they look huge from the back, don't they? Four link designed by Dan Trout. You know, the drive line comes in nice and straight on this thing, so there's no vibes anymore. That was a lot of work to get rid of when we first built it, um, but it's really killer now. You know, kind of cool stuff, like the skid plate wraps up underneath the car, so you've got like one 
continuous skid plate that comes up on the uh, on the diff. So that's a giant skid plate that's just smashed over the years and pieces cobbled on top of it. Um, coming up through there, that's a two borks third member uh, pinion support. The skid plate's off this thing, so you can actually look underneath it and see a little bit of stuff. You got your uh, dynamic converter there, dynamic ARE dry sump pan, and all the Brown and Miller fittings, um, all the Messier stuff. You know, it's a Messier flex plate. You know, there's a lot of little trick stuff. Like, see this detail work, like where you've got these two little pieces. These are just cobbled on little pieces just to bow the skid plate. Uh, and there's another piece right here that hangs down and it's radius, just so that the skid plate's got a little bit of a radius around it to keep anything from ever getting back up into the flex plate because all this stuff is dropped down so low in here. The dry sump belt sits super loose, but we've got a big sheaved piece on here so you can't lose the belt just a matter of when at some point on this stuff that something's gonna break but uh you know for now it's been it's been pretty solid and everything to me is holding up so that's it guys i don't know if you have any other questions uh be happy to show you guys in more detail but that's uh kind of the tour of the vehicles tour of the cj jackson still doing jumping jacks jumping jackson <laughs> are you jumping jackson all uh, right by the way JP Gomez, yeah, thanks a lot. I, I backed up on uh, I backed up on Wrecking Ball because I don't know I had a bad line and uh, he made me pay the penalty for it. So you win, dude. Payback's a bitch though. <laughs> Super stoked to show you guys uh, my Ford Raptor and my Jeep JL. So I've got a uh, rigid lights on the front of my. Raptor and it's a super cool setup because SAE legal driving lights on the outsides and that way when I want to drive on the highway I can flip those on and I've got the the D series pros in the middle These are those rage forth rockers that we put a ton of effort designing and going out and testing on Rubicon to make sure that they were Slippery underneath so you could slide over rocks, but they still give you protection and kept you up off your fenders so that you weren't just smashing the side of everything. Obviously, it's got the Rage 4th rear bumper, which is cut out so you can get your trailer hitch to fit. It's got the sensors and the spot for these rigid, uh, you know, flush mounts that are diffused. And that this is a cool little trick setup because you can wire into the uh, trailer hitch wiring, just tap into it for the lead. And when you put it in reverse, you get all that extra light that your uh, camera picks up. And obviously, this thing has my spare tire delete on it, the Rage 4 spare tire delete. Hey, the other thing I didn't mention about these is the Fox 3.0 internal bypasses with uh, the DSCs. The DSCs made such a huge difference. Fox did such a good job setting it up. You know, they've always built stuff that's right in the desert. But to get the DSCs for that low speed stuff and the rocks made a huge difference in ride control. I love driving this thing. Um, also in the back is my trusty ARB. This thing has been pretty much on for like four years, five years now through Baja multiple times, all the hammer trips, all the Rubicon trips. Um, it's been used and abused. It's had a lot of meals in it and uh, I love that thing. So when we go down to Baja, I set one of them at uh, zero degrees and one of them at like 33 and I keep all the regular food at 33 with drinks and stuff and I freeze all the stuff that we want to have frozen and it's zero degrees. So then you get to a place and you want to eat something, you got it all in the back love those things i heard the new one too has like dual zones so getting even better over there be so I, I talked about this a little bit but just to show you this uh bed cover i got installed at four wheel parts the other day super slick it takes up a little bit of space up here but it gives you all your bed totally secure you know you never have to worry about anything getting stolen out of the back of it when you're you know going around and it makes such a huge difference to have it all Safe, especially when you're like pre-running in Mexico and stuff you can just lock this right here and uh, it's all dialed in so those are my rigs uh, I got a couple more that we'll show you next time with uh, side by sides and some play toys dirt bikes stuff like that but uh, these are my dailies that I love driving and uh, wanted to show them all off and, and get you guys input so thanks for watching and uh, see you guys soon